Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about how to use low dose naltrexone, otherwise known as LDN, for the treatment of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In fact, you can use low dose naltrexone for a variety of other conditions, many different autoimmune diseases. You can use it actually for weight loss as well, um, for improving blood sugar, for reducing pain, and so on. It has a lot of beneficial effects. Uh, but I want to specifically talk about how to use it in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I realize that I've talked a lot, I've written a lot about LDN, but I haven't really talked a lot about it in terms of video. So uh, consider this that, that video. We're going to be talking exactly about how to use it, why it's beneficial, what it is. And so if this is your first time being introduced to LDN or low dose naltrexone, hopefully this is a good thing for you to hear because you should know that there are other treatments available to you, including medications, because this is what this is, that can actually help and treat and potentially even reverse Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So we're gonna jump in here. We'll be talking about what it is. We'll talk about dosing. We'll talk about side effects. We'll talk about what to expect in terms of results. And we'll talk about how um, most people kind of come, or how, what, you know, we'll talk about how most people experience the benefits in terms of percentages. And then we'll talk about how to actually get it. So let's talk about the first thing, and that is what is LDN? As I mentioned previously, LDN stands for low dose naltrexone and is actually taking a smaller dose of an FDA approved medication called naltrexone, which is used to treat, well, it's actually FDA approved to treat alcohol dependence, okay? So naltrexone, if used in low doses, which is why we call it LDN, so you must distinguish LDN from naltrexone, even though it's the same medication, just comes in different doses. And that will be important as we talk about it in just a second. Um, it, we're using it in a different way. We're using it as a much lower dose, and it's probably this lower dose which causes the beneficial impacts that it has on autoimmune disease, chronic pain, inflammation, and so on. So in the traditional setting, let's say that you went to your doctor, you have alcohol dependence, and they give you naltrexone, which by the way, I very ever rarely seen this actually prescribed in common practice. So it is a medication that exists and it is FDA approved, but I really don't see a lot of people using it. The reason that it's used though for alcohol, alcohol dependence is because when you take it, it is blocking opioid receptors. So when you consume the alcohol, you're not feeling that euphoria or that high that can occur um, when you are becoming intoxicated, right? That's essentially the idea. Now, what we are doing when you use it in a low dose is you are taking a fraction of the total dose, somewhere between 1.5 milligrams and 4.5 milligrams, when the normal total dose is 50 milligrams. So we're using a much, much smaller dose. And what we are doing is we're temporarily causing a blockade on these opioid receptors, which is very short lived. So we're blocking it and then releasing it because it's a low dose. And then what that is doing is it's causing a paradoxical increase in uh, endorphins that are released. So it's actually giving your, your body a natural, it's not really a high, but you can kind of think of it in that way, a natural release of endorphins. And these endorphins then have the beneficial effects which cause the redu reduction or the balancing of the immune system, the reduction in pain, right? Because when you feel um, a sense of euphoria, you actually kind of forget a little bit about the pain that you might be feeling. So in this way, it's having a lot of downstream benefits by taking that low dose and by temporarily blocking the receptors, but for a short period of time and then releasing it. And then you have that, that consequence release in endorphins or that subsequent release in endorphins. So that's really how it's working. All right, let's talk a little bit about dosing. So what should you do in terms of dosing? It is used a little bit weird um, or in a different way than, than the standard doses. So I'll see a lot of people, they'll say, hey, I went to my doctor, I asked for LDN, and then they end up with a, a dose of 50 milligrams of naltrexone. And they're like, what do I do with it? Well, if, if you wanted to get uh, crazy with it and, and you were into, um, chemistry, you actually could dissolve it, put it into solution and get the dose out that you want. Although that's very complicated and I probably wouldn't recommend it because it's better to let a pharmacy do that on your behalf. And the reason is because you're using a much smaller dose than what that 50 milligram, that standard dose is. So in this case, usually what I recommend is starting with 1.5 milligrams of LDN and then titrating your dose up in slow increment increments by 1.5 milligrams. So you'll start out at 1.5 milligrams of LDN, which must be compounded by a compounding pharmacy. Um, and then you'll be on that for about two to four weeks, depending on how your body tolerates it and how, what kind of symptoms you're experiencing. And then at that point, if you still feel like you need a little bit of a, a boost, you can go up to 3.0 milligrams, which again, we're just, again, we're going up by 1.5 milligram increments. And then you'll stay on that for another two to four weeks. And then you'll see kind of how you feel. And then if necessary, you will go up another 1.5 milligrams. So your total dose will then be 4.5 milligrams. So you start at 1.5 and you add 1.5 on two times until you get to a total dose of 4.5. Now I am a big proponent of using the smallest amount of LDN possible to get the, the most benefit possible. So what I mean by that is this, just because the standard dose for mo most people is 4.5 milligrams and that's what they do well on, you may not actually need that. So if you can get by and you can get the benefits at 1.5 milligrams or three milligrams, then stay on that dose. And here's why. 
if necessary, you could always go up later. And so what I end up doing is I think that this is a, a very beneficial way for patients with Hashimoto's to, to use LDN is they stay on whatever minimal dose is required to see improvement at their base level. And then if they ever end up in a flare, which let's face it does happen to a lot of thyroid patients, they can then go up to that slightly higher dose of 4.5 milligrams and they can help you know, battle that fair flare, get that back down to normal and then go back down to their sort of standard dose. So I prefer to do it that way. Um, and I've seen a lot of success in using it that way, but you'll see a lot of other people. There, there are some people that I've seen that are so sensitive, they can't even handle the 1.5 milligrams. Some people need even 0.25 or 0.5 milligrams to start with. So don't be afraid to play around with your dosing and a compounding pharmacy can do all of this for you. So if you start at 1.5 and you feel a little bit weird, try going even lower. And, and likewise, you can actually, there is a range that you can go up to. So I'm actually, I'm actually comfortable going all the way up to 13.5 milligrams, um, which is four times or three times that 4.5 milligram dose. Uh, but that's something that, again, you're going to have to play around with and see kind of where you go and see if you get benefit at these higher doses. Because remember, every body is a little bit different. You're going to respond differently to different doses. You might be more sensitive. You might be more resistant. It's just going to take some time to figure that out. Um, and this will kind of come back as we talk about the percentages of people uh, who experience improvement. But then I want to move on to side effects for, for right now. So in, in terms of side effects, LDN is actually really well tolerated. It doesn't have very many side effects. In, in fact, my experience shows that very few people experience any real negative side effects. They do occur, but they tend to be mild. Um, and most of the time, people who take it, they just don't really notice any different, really. Or if they do, it's a slight improvement. And again, we'll talk about that in just a minute. If you are someone who is going to experience side effects, they tend to be mild and rarely you might experience insomnia. Um, sometimes I've seen headaches and you might have changes to appetite, which can be a good thing, right? Depending on your weight and if you're trying to lose weight or not, some people will notice a suppressed appetite, which again can be bad, can be good depending on your situation. And sometimes you'll get nauseated or abdominal issues, um, gastric upset or um, things like that. But those are very rare, I would say. Most people don't really experience them. I, I, I would say most people who take it at least more than 50% don't even notice um, any negative side effects. They only notice the beneficial side effects. So let's talk about those. So what should you expect to see in terms of results? So as I mentioned before, um, well, let's actually talk about percentages and then we'll kind of break those down a little bit. So when you pull people who have used LDN and you ask them, you know, what percentage of you who took this, of these hundreds of people who took this, how much did you feel very improved? How much did you feel a little bit better? How much did you feel nothing at all? How much did you, did you get any worse? And so I'll go over these numbers. So when they pull people, 13% felt much better. So they were very much improved when using it. So it's, you know, a little one in 10 ish or so. 37% felt much improved. So if you combine the very much improved and the much improved groups, we have about 50% of people who notice either much improvement or very much improvement. So there's about a one in two chance that you'll see some significant improvement. 20% had minimal improvement. 20% um, had no change. And then 10% got minimally worse. So we have, that's basically what I've seen too. Um, about 50% of people who will notice a difference, 50% of people who won't. And of that 50% who won't, about 10% may feel a little worse. Now, I tend to think that, that that group of people who are probably feeling worse, these are people that if you adjusted their dose either downward or a little bit higher, might see improvement. So it's you can't just take these numbers and run with them, but they do kind of give you a good idea as to what you should expect. In terms of symptoms, how that looks, um, I would say that not every time are they obvious and clear. As mentioned before, about 13% of people will see significant improvement when they start taking it. These are people who will notice a reduction in inflammation. They'll have an improvement in their joints. Um, they'll have improved joint mobility. They'll have an improved sense of well-being. They might have more uh, clear thoughts. It's pretty obvious when they take it. Other people, on the other hand, I've noticed, they don't notice that it's causing benefit until they take it away. So once they say uh, they'll be on it for two or three months and I'll say, hey, do you think this is working? They'll say, ah, I don't think so. And I'll say, okay, well, let's, let's go off of it and see what happens. So they go off of it and then all of a sudden all these symptoms they weren't really paying attention to start coming back and they're like, whoa, 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 I, I got to get back on this right away. That actually happens fairly frequently. So I think these are probably the people who are fitting into that minimally improved um, sort of area and that's about 20% of people. So there's a one in five chance when you stop taking it, you'll realize just how beneficial it was um, it, when you do that. So other, other benefits or other things that you might C include improved blood sugar. Remember, it does have some impact on insulin resistance, which is why it can actually impact your weight. And you might also have changes to your dreams. So I have a, a number of people who have told me that when they start taking it, they actually get very vivid dreams. Um, some people equate that to better thyroid function. Some people equate it to the medication. I'm not sure which one is causing it. Maybe it's a combination of both, but you might get some dreams. I've only had one person who has said, I can't take this because my dreams are just that intense. So I think it kind of depends on what type of dream you are, you are having. Um, so that is something to, to consider. Okay, so the next question is, how do you get it? 
the way that you get it is through a compounding pharmacy. So, and remember, the key here is that it is not the same thing as naltrexone. If you go to a, a conventional doctor, like a family practice doctor, a nurse practitioner, um, or an endocrinologist, and you ask for naltrexone, you're probably going to get some pushback, first of all. Um, I do know that they are more willing to prescribe it nowadays since there's more literature about it and it's more well known on the internet. Um, and it's a little easier to research than it was, let's say even five years ago, right? A lot more people know about it five years ago or a lot more people know about it now than five years ago. Um, but even then you might get some pushback. And even if you do get it prescribed, they might give you the wrong type, which is just the standard naltrexone, um, which comes in the 50 milligram tablet. So that actually doesn't really help you unless, as I mentioned, you somehow dissolve it and, and titrate it and, ch and change the dosing yourself, which isn't optimal. Uh, so a better option is to come to your doctor and there's resources online which can help you do this. And you say, hey, I need low dose naltrexone. Here is how to prescribe it. And you can even give them a compounding pharmacy, which is a different than a big box pharmacy. So this isn't like a CVS or a Walgreens or a Costco or a Walmart. This is a special type of pharmacy that can, that can uh, change dosing as necessary. So it's helpful if you gave them that information and said, here, I need it. You know, I need uh, 100 uh, capsules or 100 tablets in 1.5 milligram dosing, and then you can kind of do the titration on your own. So in addition to getting it from a physical uh, doctor that you're going to, like your family practice doctor or endocrinologist, there are now actually some places that you can get them online. Um, I have had, I've heard some of uh, more reports of people who are getting it online. So that is a potential option, but you will need to see a physician either in your state via telemedicine um, or something like that. You'll need to have an appointment in order to get the prescription because it does require a prescription, at least in the United States. There may be other ways to get it overseas, although I'd be hesitant to recommend that route simply because you can't ensure that they're, they're, there's high quality there. Lastly, one other way that you can try and get it if, you, if you've expired or if you've exhausted all their options and they're simply not working for you. Now, Trexone is actually found in another medication, believe it or not, um, that's FDA approved for weight loss, and that is called Contrave. So Contrave is a combination of naltrexone and bupropion, which is Wellbutrin essentially, um, and it comes together in different dosages. So it's a little bit higher than it would be normally in one capsule. So one capsule of Contrave contains eight milligrams of naltrexone, which is pretty close to the 4.5 milligrams of low-dose naltrexone. Um, so you could potentially do that if you didn't mind also taking the Wellbutrin. I can't remember the dose of the Wellbutrin. Maybe it's 100 milligrams, something like that. Um, but it does come with the Wellbutrin kind of built into it. It's a two, two in one. And again, that is FDA approved for weight loss. So if you're having problems getting it from your doctor, you might say, hey, maybe, maybe you can get them to prescribe Contrave for you, in which case you'd be getting eight milligrams of, of uh, naltrexone built into that medication. But if, again, if you don't want the Wellbutrin combined in there, then that, that is a potential problem. But that's just another kind of way that you can go about trying to get uh, naltrexone if you're exhausting all other options and there's nothing else that you can do. So I have found um, LDN or low dose naltrexone to be pretty effective in treating Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I do want to point out though that very rarely is it the case that you're going to take LDN and you're, you know, with your thyroid medication and you're going to call it a day and everything's going to be hunky-dory and you're not going to have any other problems. I think it's best used as a combination therapy with supplements, with lifestyle changes, with um, exercise changes, with stress reduction, with using um, your thyroid medication, using T4 and T3 medication. When you combine all these things together, that's really when you see significant results. So I'd recommend it using it in that way um, and do give your body a good enough shot to ensure that it is or is not working in you. And that usually is on the order of about two to three months. Um, if it's a little bit expensive, you can kind of lean towards the two months, but I'd recommend giving it at least 90 days of daily use and allow your body to get up to that higher dose before you say, hey, it's working or it isn't. Um, because I've seen a lot of people, as I mentioned before, who, who take it, then they go off of it and they're like, whoa, I need that back because it was helping, but they didn't notice it was helping until they stopped taking it. Okay, so that's, um, that's pretty much it in terms of low dose naltrexone. If you have any questions about it or if you want to know information, if you want additional information on it, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to get to those. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients like you feel better. So if you like this stuff, I think you'll like those uh, downloads. Otherwise, that's all I have for you guys today. And so otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.